Welcome to Dev Tips, everybody. This is the ninth video in this series called How to Make the Best Website in the World or Any of the Other Worlds like Forever. <laughs> if this is your first time watching Dev Tips, welcome. Welcome to the family. You should click right here, though. This is not the video for you. This playlist will take you to the first video in the series that we're watching right now. Again, How to Make the Best Website in the World Forever. Today, finally, we're going to start looking at the showcase area or the work section of the site that we're building. And I mean, I say finally because we've, we've spent, I think, two weeks now looking at awesome pull requests. And I say finally in kind of like a tongue-in-cheek way because the actual reasons we've had a delay getting to this section have been so incredible. You know, you guys are like contributing to the code base on GitHub, uh, adding awesome things. In fact, even as I, you know, create this video and edit it down and re record these uh, intros and stuff, there has been an explosion of pull requests just this week and people are adding awesome things and we're just having a great discussion over there on GitHub uh, about all these features. So check that out uh, here. Maybe there's a thing to click on and then also there's a link to the GitHub repo in the description of the video below. So like I said, we're going to do the work section today. I'm excited. I know you're excited. Let's just, let's just start right now. Okay, let's dive right in. In the past few videos, we saw that we made the header here, the about section, and the footer. And there's been a lot of contributions. For example, we now have a scrolling menu. Um, these are automatically uh, generated by a settings page and a few other things. I'm really excited about what we're doing. But today we're going to be focusing on the section that comes right in between here the next section, which is the work section, which is going to look like this. Now, I already have a few things set up in my project here for time's sake. We've seen how we construct these things in previous videos, but I've set up a work.html, which is imported into the index.html right here. And that's included in the templating system that comes along with Jekyll. Also, I've created a work.sass, and that's pulled in through the, the sections directory right here. So the sass. Uh, work and the work.html are ready to be created right now. Also, I want to direct your attention to the images folder. I have created a new subfolder called work and in that subfolder are eight project folders and each one has a thumbnail called thumb.jpg. They're all called thumb.jpg and there are eight project folders and we'll get to that and use those in a little bit. Now, for the first part of this video, we're going to do like we do for every other section up until this point, and we're going to describe with our markup what we see in the design. First, I see here a gray box and a, uh, the title of work, and then inside here the thumbnails. So I'm just going to make another section, and then I want that same uh, headline in there, and that's going to be an H3. And actually, I want to use that menu uh, auto scroll, so I need to put this as an ID of, oops, equals ID of work, and uh, inside I'm right work. And now on this section area, I need to have a way to signify that this is going to be one of the, the darker blocks. So, like for example, we have clients here; it's on white, and then this contact what? <laughs> contact uh, that's in gray here so I need to wait like a common uh, class or something on this section so I'll just put um, I'll just put a, a class of alternate uh, alt alt section yeah Okay, and what we'll do with that alt section is we'll just hook the color and, and the different headline style uh, color into that. And now that we have the work and the body or the kind of container of the section, I'm going to create a place for these, um, uh, what are these, like thumbnails to live. Now, currently in this design, I have them uh, just going to the edge of the grid and they're not full width. 
I'm, I'm deciding if I want them to be full width or not. Um, I mean, it could easily do so. They could expand quite simply. But let's say that there is a max width, and then, then when they collapse, they'll be full width. Let's say that. Okay, so they need to have a container. Div class. This is the project container. Okay. And then now we have to map out what one of these containers will kind of look like. Um, actually, I don't want to call this project container because it's not the actual projects. These are the thumbnails. I want to call this the thumb container. Thumb container. Okay. Um, and now we have to kind of map out what <laughs> the structure of these thumbnails will look like. And notice that we have a kind of like a popover or a slide in or something, kind of an interaction. This this magnifying glass and this uh, the name of the project will show up when we hover over it, and it will be kind of like grayed out by the accent color. And I'm not sure, but I want some type of animation, maybe like it zooms out or zooms in or, or slides, you know, in or whatever. We can think about that later, but div class thumb unit. And now I'm describing, <clears throat> I'm describing the kind of the whole container of each thumbnail. I call it, I use the word, the keyword unit when I'm talking about like repeatable item like structures. So thumb unit and then Maybe I'll put this in anchor tag uh, so that I can, it's clickable, you know, well, it would be clickable anyway, because with JavaScript you can make anything clickable, but uh, just, you know, keep it a little, I'll use a background on the, the anchor itself and make it a block element, but I want this text to slide up, right? So I'm going to make a div of class um overlay and in there we'll call it um well, strong and this is this is going to be the first one will be called typo typo international and um, then we need to have a space for that icon so let's just put this here This is a placeholder, so we know that we're going to put something there. I'm not going to call it zoom icon, and it's probably not going to be a div, but that's just there so we can know what's up. Um, that looks pretty good, but overlay is going to have the color. It's going to be the words. There's going to be an icon after it. I'm just kind of nervous that, like, what if the name of the um, project or the unit is kind of long? I don't want that to have a problem visually, like it will wrap or something like that. Maybe there's something we can do with JavaScript to keep it nice and, and short. This looks pretty good. Um, let's make a few of these. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And uh, doop, doop, doop. I want to do something where, okay, well, anyway, that's the structure of it. And it looks pretty good. Now that we have the structure mapped out with our markup, we can focus on the styling of this section. So welcome to part two. This is about styling. Okay, the first thing I see is a class called alt section. And I want this section to um, have a background of um, the color is gonna be, it's in our SAS here. Um, Document background color? Nope. Section? Nope. Background color. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, good. So it being a section gave us all the right margins that we wanted. Uh, the background color looks good. And we have all of these are, are uh, block level anchor tags. Interesting. Oh, why are they block level? Because they wrap blocks? Yeah, they're not display block. Okay. Um, cool. Okay, the first thing we need to do is set out 
on a grid here. So I'm going to take each, well, first of all, let's take this thumb container and make that a worthy container. So class thumb container is going to be um, max width of uh, 968 pixels and uh, margin is going to be um, zero from the top because it looks like the bottom padding of this headline already takes care of the space I want between there and then I do want some space on the bottom it looks like I want about 100 pixels on the bottom so this margin is going to be zero auto to center and 100 pixels to the bottom. And there we go. Oh, hmm, that didn't work out too well. Let's just put it as zero in the bottom, and then the padding will put 100 pixels at the bottom. Padding bottom, 100 pixels. Mm, that's much better. Now we have to take consideration each of these thumb units. Is that what we call them? Thumb. Unit, yeah, okay. So, thumb unit, you're going to be four across, which means you're going to be with 25% uh, and height. You're going to be, uh, let's say, just you know, start out here 200. Nah, that's too tall. 150. 150. Um, background pink just so we can see you oh you know what it is because it's an anchor tag which is normally on display in line I need to ch I need to uh, forcibly change that anchor to be a display um, block so that that was why the height and width wasn't taking although the background could have worked let's see Okay, so now we have the correct dimensions, but they're need, they need to be positioned with each other. And I say float left so that they can wrap up four in a row. Okay, good, 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 good. And the thumb container, I want to uh, clear fix that. Great, just great. Okay, cool. So. These look tight. These look tight. <laughs> These look nice. I want to put a placeholder of the uh, background image here. And um, <clears throat> uh, assets. Uh, image work. Uh, project. Dash one from dot jpeg. Okay, they should all be the same. Cool. And then uh, background. So this is something cool you can do with um, SAS. So you can just do this. So I don't have to write the word background every time. Background position. Uh, center. And um, repeat, no repeat, and size cover. You have to put the uh, little guy there. There we are. Okay, so let's see what happens when we scrunch this in. Okay, so these things are gonna get thinner. They're not gonna get smaller because, 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 I'll tell you why. Because the height is um, a fixed height that we defined. It's not a proportional height, right? So let me show you what, what I mean by that. So I said five, the height is 150 pixels. If I remove that completely, what happens? 
that it will collapse down to just the height of its text, right? Just the height of the content that's keeping it there. But if I go in here to thumb overlay, oh, and I need to position this guy relative. If I go into thumb overlay and position it as absolute, what will happen? These little, you won't be able to see any of these images, they'll just collapse. And they're collapsed. They collapsed. All eight of those words are just right here because they have no height. And they have uh, no height. So what we want to do is um, I want to create the height based on the width. And there is a way to do that, and it's kind of sneaky. If I go in here to the thumb unit and I say um, padding top 20%. Now that's this padding is based on it's 20% of the width of the unit, which is really weird, but also super convenient for us to do proportional or you know kind of proportional thumbnails. Look at this. Now the the word uh, the label is pushed outside because it's being pushed down by the um, by the padding. But I, I called it position absolute. If I say top zero, it will it'll stay inside of its container, see, inside of its parent, because its parent is relative. We did that together earlier. So in my design, are these icons? Are these? Uh, yeah, they are touching. Okay. I need to take this thumb overlay, and I need to, uh, man, let's do a better, let's do a shorthand for this position here. Position, absolute, absolute uh, zero pixels, zero pixels, zero pixels, zero pixels, pixels, all okay. right. And then uh, that what that will do is it will stretch this um, thumb overlay to the top, to the bottom, to the left, and to the right. So it will cover it completely. And then I'll say background. You're going to be, oh, what is it called in SAS? Opacify? Oof. It's a weird word. Opacify my color of accent. Um, about opacify it about ninety percent is that right or is it ten percent I, I always get confused let's see nothing no, nothing okay why not thumb unit and then inside overlay wait thumb overlay oh are we having an error. Oh, it looks like opacify might be the wrong. Oh, it's not per, it's not ninety percent. It's it's a scale between one and or zero and one. So I want to I want to opacify it. Uh, was it zero point nine? Mm, okay. I was expecting it to go. All the way to the top, thumb unit, thumb overlay. Why is this position absolute getting over it? Oh, it's spelled wrong. Ab so loot. Okay. Awkward. And there we go. That's what I was expecting. Complete block, but I was expecting a little bit of opacity. Let's put it down, knock it down to five. Hmm, that's not what I wanted. Uh, SAS opacify. This is what I'm looking for right here. Okay, I was um, doing it wrong. I was making the color more opaque, which it's already at 100% opacity right now, so that was doing nothing. 
what I wanted to use the keyword of transparentize or fade out. Fade out is easy to remember. I'll use fade out. Fade out 50%. Let's see if that works. Uh, that's what we wanted. Okay, so what that does is it takes the hex. So this color is just a simple hex and it fades it out. It does the math and says, what is this going to be in RGBA so that it can have some transparency to it. Now, five is too much according to our design. Let's look at our design. Look at how rich that is. This is 50. That doesn't look right. Fade out. And so this, I want this color to only come in when you're hovering over the thumb unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say thumb unit and hover. Then the thumb overlay, I think I'll have it just like slide in. Slide in. So if in order to have it slide in, this is what I want the background to end up as. So I'll do like this. Thumb overlay. So okay, let me read this selector to you. When you're hovering over the thumb unit, thumb overlay will get this position. So by default, I want it to have a different position, which is, uh, let's see, top of 100% actually. And I'll change this to 0% so it's relative, so it says the same scale. And 0, 0 is fine, but um, for the bottom, I'll just call it null because I don't want to declare the bottom. And then I need to make it a height of 100% so that it will be the same height as its parent but not constrained by the positioning so that it can jump up and down. And I want to say thumb overlay. Uh, sorry, I want to say thumb unit. Um, when you're outside of the thumb unit, I don't want you to show. So I'm going to say overflow hidden. All right, let's see if that worked. Oh, yeah, it did. It looks good. So it, it just appears quickly right now. Let me animate it for you to show you what I'm doing here. Uh, transition. There we are. See how it jumps up like that? That's pretty okay. Now, these, these are looking a little tall in my opinion. Let's say 14% um, tall height. There we go. It's a little bit better. Maybe not enough. Uh, 17, 16. That's a little better. Okay, now we need to mess with this text here. Now remember that overlay here that it's inside has is the this brown guy. So it uh, we have a lot of work to do. So overlay strong. <clears throat> uh, you're going to be text align. Actually, text align can go on the parent. Center. And OK, now strong is going to have um, padding top, actually padding all over. The top is going to be 20 pixels. The right and left are also going to be 20 pixels. And the bottom is going to be 20 pixels. So it's 20 pixels all around, I guess. Uh, we'll start there. Display block. It's an inline element normally, so if I tell it to be block, I can I can assign that padding to it. Cool. Now the overlay is going to be styled a little bit different. We're going to have white text, and uh, it's going to be like thinner in all caps. So uh, color white um, font weight is like three hundred, right? And text 
transform uppercase. Okay, cool. And then size. Um, is uh, 24. This might be a little big. Yeah, look at that. It's kind of huge. Uh, but it's good to see. Let me go into the inspect element here and go to its parent and click hover. So it's just kind of always up. We can always just see how it is. Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to do line height like 1.2 so that it's not so, there we go, it's a little tighter. Um, I'm okay with it being two lines, but I'm just kind of nervous that if it is one line, it'll look like just kind of lopsided towards the top. And if it's three lines, it'll push it too far bottom. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be a big issue, but I, I could center the the whole block of text. Hi, me again. Uh, there's some missing footage here. You didn't miss much though. I exported that magnifying glass icon the exact way that I did all the icons in video number five and we created an SVG and then I just kind of plugged that in there using the same methods. Nothing is is mysterious right now. I just didn't, it was a recording problem. But let's jump back now. I've just finished inputting that icon there. There we go. Looks good. Right? Okay, maybe later I can show you a few different ways to transition these in, but right now they just kind of jump up from the top. Now that we got the general look and feel of these thumb units down, um, I'm gonna need to find a way to manage the content for any, you know, people that come in later. And they wanna find an easy way to upload their images, change the titles of these uh, projects, and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back into my work and um, find all of the other seven of these things and basically get rid of them. We only need one. I'm going to follow the pattern that was put in place by our contributor Ricardo when he um, turned turned this into a loop um, when he was doing the menu section and. Uh, and also the skill section. So it's, it was really, really impressive how he did it. So let's follow that pattern. If we jump over to the about page, we can see what he did. He said for each skill that's on that data page, create, you know, create one of these loops. So uh, percent, percent, and then it's end for. So this is gonna loop every time there's a skill. So we don't want that to be skill. We want it to go into that settings page and create a new section um, called the work section. And uh, this will be projects. I'll just copy the pattern here. I've never done this before. I think it's really cool, but let's do a little bit of copy and pasty right here to, to uh, you know, just basically right on his awesome coattails. So, uh, yeah, a project name and then um, thumb is going to be right here. And the URL of that would be, um, you know, project one dash one slash thumb dot jpeg. Maybe I don't want it to be thumb. Maybe I want it to be something a little bit more generalized by uh, like folder. And then I could say project one folder, and then I could just ex extract the thumb if I expect the thumb uh, to be there. So uh, this one's going to be called Typo International. Uh, so this will be project two. And uh, let's just go on for the full eight here so we can uh, see what we're working with. Three, four, five, six, six, seven, and one more for eight. Okay, they're all gonna be called typo. No, let's go to the images and see what they should be called. Uh, this one is called 
American Apparel? I don't know. I don't have any words for these yet. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, so if we know the name and we know the folder, we can we can extract the thumb if, if each one of them is called thumb.jpg. And then we can also get a few more things if we know this project folder. So that's why we didn't want to dig too far and talk about the thumbnail specifically. But uh, yeah, let's try to see if this works. So in this pro template, I want to change the word skill to project in the projects. So there are eight projects, and for each of those projects, spit out this little snippet of code, changing this here to a project name, and then some unit is going to have the background. So I need to have this called project folder. And it's going to be something like assets, um, images, work, then the folder number, and then thumb. JPEG. So I need to remove the background image from the SAS. Where are you, background image? Okay, let's see what we get. Refresh. Oh, wow. Look at this. All of the um, correct. So oh, I'm just so excited right now. Okay, so since the um, they were all named correctly in terms of project numbers and the thumbnails, they showed up where they should have been. So I'm pretty excited about that. They just need to have their correct names now. Um, and we do that by going into the settings page and just kind of changing them around. So this one, what are these called? Crisp icons, number three. And number four is called Goodness, you know what? These actually do have names, and the names are that which they have been named by their creators, and we want to respect that. So I'll name these. Uh, I'll name these what they should be named. All right, being a little bit more unprepared than usual, Travis. Sure. Right now, I'm off re researching the uh, the names of all of these projects, and then I'm slowly typing them out, you know, with my index fingers for each one of the uh, each one of the units there. Again, it's not magic, but we're going to jump ahead in in time now. Okay, it should be done. Let's jump back to what I was doing before. I went and um, found all the proper names of these projects from the owners. And while I'm talking about them, I want to give a quick shout out to the people who actually created these visual designs. They are not mine, uh, but all credit goes to their owners. And you can find their names and links to their Behance projects in the description of this video below and also in the README file in the, in the whole project. So a quick, a quick thank you to Michael, Petra, Sergey, Ayub. Anton, Nick, Jonathan, and Jayu, Jayu uh, for being awesome designers and creating these projects and also being like really cool to everybody at DevTips here that they've given their express permission that we can use these in our projects, uh, use these designs in our project um, as placeholder projects. So cool, cool, cool beans, cool guys. Uh, so while I was also making the names, I noticed that I didn't like the kind of like the zooming icon and just put a plus here. I don't, I still don't think that I love it. Maybe that'll change in the future, but it is what it is. Maybe I don't even need it. Maybe I'll just, you know what? Let's just get rid of it. Go back into my work.html and delete this line right here. Now this is cool because, oh, and I'll get rid of this file. I call the zoom. Move to trash. Oh, I feel better already. What this does is it 
opens us up for a little bit more flexibility with how we position this, uh, how we position this type. So I would rather have this these, this tech be you know dead center here instead of kind of pushed up to the top like it is right here. Uh, flex and align items. Is it center? All right. There we are. Okay, that's kind of what we wanted. Why are they? Why are they floating to the left? Uh, let's say justify content. And justify content. And we're gonna say space around. This work better? Okay, so cool. Then now, now everything is nice and tight in the middle of their space. Now I still have a problem when I'm gonna shrink this down. The text gets too big and everything. But let's think about this. What's the spot where this is collapsing? What's this right here? Um, and the same spot where the, uh, was it five? 40, 540. Okay, so at 540, we know that the um, the skills are collapsing. So let's just make the same spot right here for this uh, for the work section. Hopefully, it's not too late. Uh, in the work, uh, width of our thumb unit, okay, is width of 25 percent. Let's say at media. And no, it's screen and uh, max width of was it 540 pixels? We're gonna say uh, width 50%. Is that right? Did I write that right? I don't know. Let's find out. Nope. I didn't write it right. Oh, wait, yes I did. Okay, so I did write it correctly. But it still looks a little too small. Looks a little, a little too... Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna break this, break this out so you can see it better. Um, okay, so... When 540 comes along, first first of all, this is too small already. I want to do it right about, yeesh, I'm gonna need it, oof, probably around 760. That's still a little big, but it'll be fine, 760. Okay, now I need to find out why this height is so small. If the height is going to be um, 100%, nope, the height is going to be the percentage of, sorry, I'm talking and looking and discovering at the same time. So the height is a padding top of 16%. Is that not enough anymore? Huh. That's really small. All right, well, padding time will be 26% then when it's uh, when it's time to do that. Okay, so let's try that again one more time. So this is how wide you are, and you look nice and good. Now let's shrink you up, and oh, look, still look nice and good. And then let's shrink you up even further. Oh, you still look pretty good. I don't think I see one text overflow. That's pretty good. Like this one gets a little tight a little bit. Ooh, um, now that we're centering ourselves in the middle, we don't need to do this kind of padding that I had on. I still want the padding on the sides. So let's do 0, 
Cool. Okay, so when it's big, it looks good. When it's medium, it looks pretty good. And when it's small, it looks pretty good too. I am happy with that. You guys happy with that? Okay, so this has gone along, this video's gone on pretty far. I hope I can edit it down to where it's not, you know, the two hours that I spent doing it and picking my nose and everything else I've done. Um, and if you guys want to spend another video next week on like doing different kinds of transitions here and kind of organizing this up a little bit differently, then we can do that. Let me know in the comments if you do want to organize it differently. Um, otherwise, I'm going to do, you know, what happens when you click it and I'm thinking, you know, this will, anyway, um, we'll do like some JavaScripting actually to get this working. Thank you for watching to the end. The 40th minute is always the best minute. If you enjoy this video, do what you do. Like it, share it, tweet it, you know, hide it under your pillow and save it for later. I don't, I don't know. No, no judgments here. It's a judgment-free zone. And, and also, guys, hey, leave a comment down below uh, and say if you want me to spend more time on the animations, like the hover bits, in the work section, I can make a few different variations there. We can talk about like my approach to animations, or you know, if you want to say, just Travis, just get on with the work section and show us how to you know, do the rest of it, we can do that next week as well. I want to hear from you, let me know in the below. It's going to be like a, like a Simon Cowell, you know, like, like text now and your provider will pay. Anyway, hmm. thanks for watching everybody and keep on hacking. We'll see you next week. Welcome to Dev Tips. <laughs>